Mary, we hail. And now, another proudly we hail. One of radio's outstanding dramatic half hours, starring Lee Tracy, and presented transcribed by your Army and your Air Force. From Radio City, New York, here is your star and host on Proudly We Hail, the distinguished Broadway stage, screen, and radio star, Lee Tracy. Thank you, Kenneth Banghart, and hello, everyone. Welcome again to Proudly We Hail. I understand our play takes us to New England, Lee. That's right, Ken. St. Albans, Vermont, in 1864. And it's a story that I think will make for very pleasant listening. We meet some very wonderful people with a fast-moving story to boot. After your important message, Ken, we're ready to begin. It's a message to the men and women of America. Serve your country at a time when you're needed most. Go and see the recruiting sergeant on duty at the Army and Air Force recruiting station in your neighborhood. Find out about the many openings and the many opportunities for advancement in the United States Army. Volunteer now. And now with your star, Lee Tracy, in the role of Sam Tobin, your Army and your Air Force present the proudly we hail production of Raid North. <laughs> about you, but I remember being taught in school that Gettysburg was the northernmost point the Confederate Army reached during the Civil War. But if you'd lived in St. Albans, Vermont back in 1864, you might not have agreed. At a quarter to four on a beautiful afternoon in October, you wouldn't have agreed at all. <laughs> Well, the best man to tell you about it would be Sam Tobin. He was editor of the St. Albans Daily Messenger when it happened. And all that ruckus you just heard was the sound of the biggest story of Sam's life breaking right under his nose. Yep, that's, that's just what it was. Made my ears ring for a week. I guess to start this story right, though, we got to go back a bit and south a bit. We've got to go back to June of that year, and we'll go south to Richmond, Virginia. Lieutenant Bennett Young reporting, sir. At ease, Lieutenant. Draw up a chair and make yourself comfortable. Thank you, sir. I won't keep you guessing any longer as to why I sent for you. I know all about your escape from the Yankee prison at Camp Douglas. My congratulations. Thank you, sir. They tell me you've been saying that this prison and others you were in are poorly guarded. But with a few determined men, mass escape might be saved. I had such a plan in mind, sir. Our agents in Canada seem to think your idea has merit. If enough men escaped into Canada, well, I think you can guess how they might be used. I reckon I can, Mr. Seddon. Read this over, Lieutenant, and see how it suits you. Hmm. Lieutenant Bennett H. Young is hereby authorized to organize for special service a company not to exceed 20 men in number from those who belong to the service and who at this time be on the Confederate state. He will report... Well, sir, does this mean... Exactly, Lieutenant. He will leave at once for Montreal. Upon arriving, you will recruit your company. You will have plenty of men to pick from, but be sure you choose well. The main job will be to organize attacks and uprisings in such prison camps as you think will be easiest to crack. You'll be given a list of our people to contact in Canada. They'll aid you in every way they can. Well, young man, how does it strike you? <laughs> why, why, sir, I just don't think it'd be polite to give the rebel yell in here. <laughs> That's how it all started. Lieutenant Ben Young, he was 21 years old, took a trip to Canada. There he found plenty of escaped kinsmen from which to recruit his company. Ben picked his troop with care. Mostly they were ex-cavalrymen, 
some, like Ben, had served with Morgan. All of them were young, cool-headed, and just raring to go. <laughs> they were quite a bunch of boys. Fine night for a ride, Ben. There's some woods up ahead a little way. We'll just mount there. That's where we meet the guys. I reckon. Those boys, we'd better meet them there. Do you still think word might have leaked out? Too many in on this street aside from us. Pass the word back to walk mount. Trooper, walk your mount. You take charge. I have a look up the road. Good. Good man. Turn that light. Well, sure enough, this. Weren't supposed to be any light. Coming this way, too. Let's just mosey off to the side of the road here. Men, generally your horses. Keep them real quiet. Somebody walk up. Here's that way. Carrying the lamp. Now, who'd want to be walking around these parts on a dark night? I'll just find that out. Stay here. Come on, Joe. Well, now I declare, if it ain't Mr. Meeks. Hey, you, you young fool. What do you want to do, scare the life out of a man? I beg your pardon, Mr. Meeks. It just didn't seem right to see a man walking down this lonely road late at night, all lit up with a lantern. Weren't you going to meet us in those woods? You didn't think the lucky stars had met you at all. The Yankees knew all about it. You'd have crossed the border right into a trap. Well, I do declare. But thank you kindly for your trouble, Mr. Meacham. So they know. <laughs> they know all right, young. Somebody spilled it. I didn't want to wait in the woods and take a chance on, on missing it. Sure enough. Well, I guess the only thing we can do now is go home to bed. Tomorrow we'll think there's something else. You've heard that line, the best laid plans of mice and men go off the stray. And that's just what happened with Ben's first plan. It was a mild little undertaking. He and his boys were fixing to attack Johnson's Island, Sandusky Bay, Ohio. There was a big prisoner of war camp there. Ben figured he'd start things off with a bang. <laughs> It'd make mighty interesting reading in any newspaper, north or south of Mason-Dixon line. 5,000 Confederate prisoners escaped safely into Canada, set free by daring rebel raider and his band. Oh, what a story. That would have made. Might have worked, too, only someone had talked, and the whole scheme was known. No doubt about it. Ben and his boys just missed walking right into a blue hornet's nest. Of course, after that, all prisoner of war camps on a hundred miles Canadian border were put on the alert. Kind of put a kink in Ben's whole idea, but didn't stop him for long. Not Lieutenant Ben Young, late of Morgan's cavalry. What's to stop us from being raiders? What are we going to raid? Boy, didn't they teach you how to use your head in South Carolina? We just raised blue perfect get out in all of the Yankee cities and towns we can find along this here border. We do a good enough job, maybe them Yankees will think we got some kind of an army up here and they'll send some of the troops. The more troops we can get them to send, the better for General Lee. You know, I think you've got an idea there. I not only got the idea, I got our first stopping place all picked out. It's just 14 miles below the border. Where? Right here. St. Albans, Vermont. <laughs> St. Albans, Vermont. I remember it was Saturday, October the 15th, when I first set eyes on Ben Young. It was a fine Indian summer day, mountains and the hills all bright with color. I was sitting outside the messenger doing a little whittling, thinking about a piece I was going to write, when I looked up to see four young fellows come walking down the street toward me. They were well-dressed, they were carrying heavy coats, there was something handsome and a little wild about all four of them. But the one in the lead looked and walked like a leader. I beg your pardon, sir, but could you direct us to the American house? Sure, son. Right down Main Street here. You can't miss it. Thank you, Colonel. You, uh, from up north? Uh, yes, Montreal. Came down to do a little buying. I'm Sam Tobin, editor of this here paper. If I can help you boys at all, just 
a towel on me. Why, that's right neighborly of you, Mr. Tobin, but I think we can take care of ourselves. Thank you again. Not at all. All right, Sam. Well, if it's not General Grant's right-hand man himself. <laughs> George, it's good to see you. Well, when did you get home? Last night. You're looking fine, Sam. Never better. Pull up a stick and whittle a while. Captain now, aren't you? Look mighty classy in that uniform. How long are you home for? Three weeks. Say, Sam, uh, who are those fellows I saw you talking to as I came across the green? Well, I don't know. Down from Montreal. Nice-looking boys. Why? Mm, nothing. Just seems strange to see such young fellows not wearing a uniform. The war's a long way from here, George. The war's a long way from here, George. <laughs> That's what I said. That's what I thought. I didn't know that that night, eight more young men arrived from Montreal, checked in separately at the American house. Or that on Sunday, four or five other travelers arrived and took lodgings at a boarding house not far from the center of town. It wasn't until Sunday evening services at the Congregational Church that I noticed so many new faces and again met Ben Young. Evening, Mrs. Fuller. Evening, Cyrus. Hello there, Mary. Hello, Sam. Isn't it a lovely night? Yeah, nice night for sparking, hey? <laughs> Where's Martin? Oh, Sam, on Sunday? You don't think the Lord said there was any law against sparking on Sunday, do you? <laughs> you stop it. You make me blush. A pretty girl like you. <laughs> hey there, young fella. Good evening, sir. Mr. Tobin, isn't it? That's right. I thought I saw you in church. I saw a lot of faces I'd never seen before. Say, I, I can't very well introduce you to Mary Rutledge unless I know your name. <laughs> the way you two are looking at one another, appears like you might like to meet. Uh, formally, that is. Sam, you're just awful. I uh, beg your pardon. My name is Bennett Young. Most people call me Ben. Bennett Young, huh? Oh, uh, well, Ben, this is Mary. It's a pleasure to meet you, Miss Rutledge. How do you do, Mr. Young? Well, now that you two have met, I'm sure you won't need me for anything more, so I'll just say good night. I have to say a few words to the Reverend anyway. Go, Sam. Tell your mother I'll be over to dinner one night soon. Good night, Mary. Uh, ben. Good night, sir. Good night. I left them there in front of the church, surrounded by the rest of the congregation. After I'd had a few words with the Reverend, I started on down the road toward home. I hadn't gone but a few steps when George Conger joined me. It's going to have a late fall, Sam. Ah, can I quote you? Captain Conger, the 1st Vermont Cavalry, says that uh, we're going to have a late fall. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, uh, did you notice all the young fellows there tonight? Yep. All from out of town. Strike you as odd? No, not exactly. Why? Who is that you were introducing to Mary Rutledge? Oh, a nice boy named Bennett Young from Montreal. What's on your mind, George? I don't rightly know. Just struck me as a mite unusual to see 20 strangers in the congregation. <laughs> so that's how you spend your time in church, counting all the new faces. <laughs> Everything clear, you boys? See, what about the horses? All the horse flesh we need at the livery stable, Ben. Good. Now, this here little cotillion we're all going to give has got to go nice and smooth like. It's going to start at 3.30 tomorrow afternoon sharp. Each one of you has got a job to do. We don't want to hurt no one if we don't have to. For Yankees, these folks have been downright hospitable. And we just wouldn't want them to think we weren't grateful, so uh, don't kill nobody unless they insist on it, huh? Now, if we had some drinking liquor, we could have a toast to General Lee, the Confederacy, and uh, success to us. Instead, we'll break up this little confab and get some sleep. I got a feeling tomorrow's going to be a right busy day. <laughs> Uh, 
Our star, Lee Tracy, will return for the second act in just a moment. But first, I have a message for all the young men listening to this program. If you're physically fit, you can enlist in the United States Army and join the good company of American soldiers who are doing a man-sized job in our armed forces. These men need you. They need you to stand beside them to help defend the principles that are so dear to every American. Visit your nearest Army and Air Force recruiting station now and find out for yourself. You, yes, you, can help. You are listening to Proudly We Hail. And now for the second act, here is your star, Lee Tracy, as Sam Tobin in Raid North. Maybe you should know that when Ben Young and his boys came to town, St. Albans was a busy trading center. We had three banks, good many stores and businesses, too. We were a prosperous and thriving little city, just made to order for what Ben wanted. It was exactly half past three in the afternoon that his raiding parties struck simultaneously all over town. It was as beautiful a piece of timing and coordination as you'd ever want to see. At the First National Bank, Albert Sowles, the cashier, and old General John Nathan were all alone. The general was 80 and deaf and deeply engrossed in the Springfield Republican when three men wearing heavy greatcoats entered the bank. We're Confederate soldiers. Put up your hands and be quiet. Hey, you what? You heard me. Rick, Billy, into the vault. You, you can't be. You're thieves. Help! Quiet! Hurry up, boys. Seems to me you're rather rude in your behavior, whoever you are. Why, now, hey. sir, I, I think that's downright insulting to you to say that. Hey, what's he? Can I get that revolver out of my nose, you young whelp? All right, you two. Out the door and over the green. Just remember, we're not killers and we're not robbers. This money is for the Confederacy. Now, Mark. Same kind of story took place at the Franklin County Bank. Only the boys who held that one up took all the money out of the vault and locked the cashier and a customer in it. And at William and E.D. Fuller's livery stable... All right, bring all the horses out. Grab what saddles you can, ma'am. Quick now. Hey! You put them horses there. What in turn do you think you're doing? Put back them horses, I say. Why, sir, I don't care on so. You don't own these horses, this, do you? This is my livery stable. What are you doing with those guns? Now, you get out of here. Mr. Man, you get out of here before I just blow a hole. I'll right show you. Shall I shoot him, Steve? No, oh, Jim. Remember what Ben said. You men ready? Yes, sir. Hey, Steve, look at that. Here comes that fella with a gun again. I'll teach you to steal horses. Why, the con car, no good, gold darn hunk of pig iron. It's empty. Yeah. All right, boys, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, old E.D., he cursed that empty gun till his dying day. <laughs> About that time, I looked out the messenger's window and saw a big crowd gathering on the green. They were being herded there by a bunch of men on horseback. So me, not knowing enough to mind my own business, I strolled over to see what was going on. Mr. Tobin, come right over and join the party. Is that a gun you're pointing at me, Ben? I don't have my glasses on. I'm afraid so, Mr. Tobin. A Confederate gun. Well, now, I'll be. Suppose you just join the others here and act real nice and quiet-like. I'd hate to shoot a man as polite as you. I'm sure you would, Ben. Now, listen. We ain't gonna hurt a soul if you don't give us leave. We're Confederate soldiers just paying you all a social call. Hey, Ben. Here comes the Yankee soldier. Make sure he's not on. Get him over here on the green. I'll round up the other boys and we'll get moving. Now, don't try nothing, Captain. You don't want to spoil that pretty blue uniform. Well, George? I should do more in church than count the number of strangers. I should figure out what they're doing here. Uh, guess we're a little late for that. I'm going to make a run for it, Sam. There aren't many of them and they can't watch us all. I'll head for the American house. No, I wouldn't, George. 
Lots of people here might get hurt, including yourself. I have to take that chance. Here I go. George Conger made the American house safely. And by the time I'd gotten back here to the newspaper and was getting my wind, things began to happen. George got hold of a gun and roused all the other people he could find to do likewise. Around the green, revolvers, shotguns, even some relics of the War of 1812 started potting at Ben and his boys. I saw Conger come around the corner of the American house and let go at Ben with a rifle. Ben shot back with his revolver. But, thank goodness, they didn't do anything but add to the confusion. Just about the time the American house caught fire, all of Ben's troop had reported to the green, and so, with bullets singing around their ears from all directions, they gave their famous rebel yell and galloped north, out of town. Well, that was a chase folks up here in Vermont still like to talk about. <laughs> there was Ben and his men running for the safety of the Canadian border, and right behind, riding just as hard, was George Conger, leading a posse of slightly riled townsfolk. Not all the men in Ben's company rode good mounts, and others were loaded down with the Yankee money they'd relieved the town of. As a result, wasn't long before Ben realized they were being overtaken. They're gaining on us, Steve. Yeah, right now. See the bridge up ahead? We'll stop and set fire to it. We got time? If we don't waste none. <laughs> <laughs> when George and his men reached Sheldon, they didn't look twice at the bridge that Ben and his troops set fire to. They just tore on across it. By the time the Canadian border was a mile or so away, They'd come within shooting range of each other. Take those first big men. We're catching them. Come on, you rebels. Ride. The board is up ahead. Ride. Ben and his raiders didn't stop at the immigration house on the border. With the shots of their Yankee pursuers whining about their ears, they pounded into Canada. If the rebels hoped the border would stop George and his men, they were sadly mistaken. When Vermont folks get riled, they get real riled. Put up, then. Take to the woods and pair. We'll reorganize later in Montreal. Come on, Steve, let's go. Do this trail here. You must hold. Careful, Steve. In the name of his majesty's government, hold your fire. Then, at the mounting. All right, Mac. Look here, I'm George Conger, captain of the 1st Vermont Cavalry. And I'm Lieutenant Bennett Young of the 13th Georgia Regiment, Confederate States Cavalry. And I'm Inspector Scotty Lawrence of the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. How do you do, gentlemen? I trust you'll both enjoy your stay here in Canada. What do you what? mean? I mean, gentlemen, that you two ought to get to know each other pretty well. For you're both under arrest. It will be the guests of the Canadian government as internees for the duration. Yep, both of them interned for the duration. <laughs> well, it was some story. Made us famous for a while. Now, the money, oh, we got that back. Only thing that wasn't interned. Of course, the newspapers in the North went wild, called for all-out vengeance, you know, but I always kind of figured that was a harsh way of looking at a downright brilliant piece of mischief. After the war, I remember that even George broke down, admitted it was right up to Green Mountain standard. Well, that's about, uh... Oh, 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 yeah. One more thing. While all the ruckus and shouting was going on in the newspapers, Ben wrote me a letter. Dear Mr. Tobin, I was sorry to have to leave in such a hurry without saying goodbye to you. 
As you may have heard, it's a little bit warm in Montreal, but Steve and me and the boys find the jail here most accommodating. Uh, so does Captain Conger. Mr. Tobin, all of us read your newspaper, The Daily Messenger, during our pleasant stay at the American House in St. Albans. Uh, we like it so much, I'm enclosing three dollars for a year's subscription. Just mail it to me, care of the Montreal jail. And uh, would you please convey my warmest regards to Miss Rutledge? If I ever stop back your way, would you ask her if I might call and pay my respects? Again, excuse my manners and blame my actions on the bustle and excitement which accompanied my business in your fair city. Kindest regards, Bennett H. Young, Lieutenant CSA. Yep. <laughs> he was quite the fella, that young man. Gave me my biggest story. We never forget him up St. Albans Way. <laughs> Our star, Lee Tracy, will return with a word about next week's program in just a moment. But first, I'd like to point out again that the armed forces of our nation are being expanded. They must be up to strength to defend the principles of freedom and justice. The United States Army needs the help of every young man and young woman in America who is physically fit for service in one of its many branches. Remember, when you put on the uniform of the United States Army, Everyone knows you're serving your country at a time when you are needed most. Visit your nearest Army and Air Force recruiting station. Enlist now. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented in cooperation with this station by your Army and your Air Force. Proudly we hail stars Lee Tracy. Supporting Mr. Tracy as Ben Young was Bill Lipton. Raid North was written by DeWitt Cup. The music was conducted by John Guarnieri. Proudly we hail is directed by Charles Wilkes. This is Kenneth Banghart speaking. And here again is your star, Lee Tracy. We hope you'll be with us again next week over the same station for another Proudly We Hail. Our story is titled Forget Me Not. And it's a tale of a lost man, lost memory a loyal friend, and a mysterious plot. Until then, goodbye. <laughs>